It is a fact of life that other people, even people who love you, will not necessarily agree with your ideas, understand you, or share your enthusiasm. Neither should a ship rely on one small anchor, nor should life rest on a single hope. Never depend on the admiration of others. There is no strength in it. Our life is too short, and you have important things to do. A man should live so that his happiness shall deepen as little as possible on external things. For where you find unrest, grief, fear, frustrated desire, failed aversion, jealousy, and envy, happiness has no room for admittance. And where values are false, these passions inevitably follow. There is only one way to happiness, and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond our power or our will. There is but one way to tranquility of mind and happiness, and that is to account no external things thine own, but to commit all to God. The sooner you set yourself to your spiritual program, the happier you will be. If any are unhappy, let him remember that he is unhappy by reason of himself alone. For God hath made all men to enjoy felicity and constancy of good. No one is ever unhappy because of someone else. Your happiness depends on three things, all of which are within your power. Your will, your ideas concerning the events in which you are involved, and the use you make of your ideas. Freedom is not archived by satisfying desire, but by eliminating it. Freedom is not procured by a full enjoyment of what is desired, but by controlling the desire. Is freedom anything other than the right to live as we wish? Nothing else. Freedom is secured not by the fulfilling of men's desires, but by the removal of desire. Freedom is the only worthy goal in life. It is won by disregarding things that lie beyond our control. God has entrusted me with myself. No man is free who is not a master of himself. If someone tried to take control of your body and make you a slave, you would fight for freedom. Yet, how easily you hand over your mind to anyone who insults you. When you dwell on their words and let them dominate your thoughts, you make them your master. If you choose, you are free. If you choose, you need blame no man, accuse no man. All things will be at once according to your mind and according to the mind of God. Only the educated are free. Whoever then would be free, let him wish for nothing, let him decline nothing, which depends on others, else he must necessarily be a slave. We must not believe the many who say that only free people ought to be educated. An ignorant person is inclined to blame others for his own misfortune. To blame oneself is proof of progress. But the wise man never has to blame another or himself. What really frightens and dismays us is not external events themselves, but the way in which we think about them. It is not things that disturb us, but our interpretation of their significance. What would have become of Hercules, do you think, if there had been no lion, hydra, stag, or boar, and no savage criminals to rid the world of? What would he have done in the absence of such challenges? Whenever anyone criticizes or wrongs you, remember that they are only doing or saying what they think is right. They cannot be guided by your views, only their own. So if their views are wrong, they are the ones who suffer insofar as they are misguided. Who then is the invincible human being? one who can be disconcerted by nothing that lies outside the sphere of choice. 
Whoever is going to listen to the philosophers needs considerable practice in listening. Why do you want to read anyway? For the sake of amusement or mere erudition? Those are poor, fatuous pretexts. We have two ears and one mouth, so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Do not try to seem wise to others. He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. If they are wise, do not quarrel with them. If they are fools, ignore them. If you want to live a wise life, live it on your own terms and in your own eyes. Small-minded people blame others. Average people blame themselves. The wise see all blame as foolishness. First, learn the meaning of what you say, and then speak. It is impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. Be discriminating about what images and ideas you permit into your mind. Books are the training weights of the mind. They are very helpful, but it would be a bad mistake to suppose that one has made progress simply by having internalized their contents. Don't just say you have read books. Show that through them, you have learned to think better to be a more discriminating and reflective person. Death is nothing terrible, else it would have appeared so to Socrates. For it is not death or pain that is to be feared, but the fear of pain or death. Nothing is by its own nature calamitous. Even death is terrible only if we fear it. You are a little soul carrying around a corpse. So what oppresses and scares us? It is our own thoughts, obviously. What overwhelms people when they are about to leave friends, family, old haunts, and their accustomed way of life? Thoughts. Do not get too attached to life, for it is like a sailor's leave on the shore, and at any time the captain may sound the horn, calling you back to eternal darkness. Please let us know your favorite quotes from these best Epictetus quotes about life, happiness, freedom, and wisdom in the comments section. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.